All right, greetings, YouTubers and fellow model builders. This is how to paint an instrument panel. This is a spare instrument panel out of the uh, A6 Intruder kit. Uh, this was the instrument panel that was designated for the tram version. And this is the one that we're going to go ahead and use. Now, most of the time, I like to try to paint these while they're still on the tree. But for uh, the purpose such as this, I went ahead and took it off. But uh, usually if I'm able to, provided it has a good angle that I can get to it, I like to keep the instrument panels on the tree for painting. But if you ever have to take it off, or if you just prefer to take it off, I like to use a clothespin, and I'll just secure it like that and use it to uh, kind of hold it up there. Now uh, when I do my instrument panels I like to keep them provided it's technically correct I like to keep them the same color as pretty much the inside of the cockpit tub. Obviously the instruments and other parts are going to be black but uh, in this case we're going to be using the uh, testers uh, flat gold gray model masters. Uh, this was used on my last two builds of the F8 and the A6 and it was also it's also being used on my current build the F105. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna dip some paint up and we're gonna paint this do a first coat. I usually do a first coat of uh, gray on the entire instrument panel. You don't want to get a whole bunch on there because you don't want to lose your detail. So I'll just kind of start coming in here and we're just going to paint her up. Just like so. It's kind of loose on there. Normally uh, I'd probably just hold this, but seeing how I'm trying to demonstrate how to paint it, I'm using the clothespin. And you just want to make sure you get all, everything covered in gray. Get the side of the instrument panel here. Just make sure we're getting everything. Even the parts that are going to be painted black. Well, you don't have to paint the hood gray. That's really not necessary. That's just going to be all black. And what I'm missing down here where the clothespin is, is I'll just I'll just get that later. Once this has had time to dry. We're just going to paint her up. Looks like it's getting pretty well covered. And again, you don't want to cake it on there. You just want to get it to where you've got a good coat. And that's that. Now, what I'll do now, oh wow, well, got some hair on there. What I'm going to do now is we're going to let this dry. I let it dry for about anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. This paint dries really fast, so if you don't want to wait that long, you don't have to. But um, I like to let it just get nice and dry. And then what I'll do next is I'm going to apply some black. So we'll let that dry, and then we'll uh, get back at it. Okay, now that we have the uh, flat gray painted on the instrument, or the flat gold gray painted on the instrument, I've allowed it to dry for, you know, about 30 minutes to an hour. This, this flat paint dries pretty fast. What I'm going to use now to start painting the uh, instruments and stuff is a modified brush. This is the, uh, this is a normal testers brush and what I've done is I've taken a brush like this and I've modified it 
to uh, help me paint small things such as instrument panels, dials, and things of that nature. What I do is, is I take a little bit off and I cut it. I, I, I take a little bit. Well, actually, actually, I take a lot and I cut it and I end up with something that looks like this. Just like so. I have another one too. This one's got a little bit more intense of a trot there. And this allows me to paint small items like dials and switches and other things. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna dip it in black here and we're gonna we're gonna paint us some instruments here. Okay, here we go. Now I've got the camera right in front of me, so this is gonna be kind of tricky. So I might mess up. So I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna start. And you're gonna run over. Don't worry about that, you're gonna end up running over. Maybe not that much. Again, it's kind of kind of doing this unorthodox here. I've never done it like this before. Usually I have my face a lot closer. But just like so. And you just start going over the details of what you want painted black. And to be technically correct, uh, a good part of the intruder's instrument panel is black with the gray with the gray behind it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit a couple more instruments here that I'm gonna let's see I believe this right there that is the uh, attitude indicator and uh, go ahead and uh, this is probably the altimeter here and it's not like we're gonna be able to tell anyway. But whoops. Let me move around here so I can maneuver. So you just you don't want to really press too hard and it takes practice getting that balance of having the right amount of paint and the right amount of pressure. And you know you're gonna if you're if you're really new to this you're gonna make mistakes it's inevitable I've been doing this for years I still make mistakes model building is a lifelong learning process there's always something else to learn so there that's the, that's it right there I'm gonna go ahead and stop the tape here and uh, finish this and then um, because it would take far too long to keep rolling and then we'll do some more fine detail. Okay, now we have uh, pretty much got everything painted black that we want to have painted. And uh, I can see it through the camera here that there's actually some areas I missed, but we won't worry about that now because we're just doing this you know we're just doing this to to show and for educational purposes but obviously you can see where I've gone over in some areas it it got a little sloppy and I'm gonna show you how to take care of that here and what I have is my trusty old exacto knife and I'm gonna go in and just try to scrape some of that down where I can getting it. The camera really picks it up well. So stuff that you can't really see with at least my eyes. Cause, I mean I, I can see pretty well but um, there's stuff that the camera can see that even I can't. Now especially here with these panels to get such a to get the line a little bit crisper you just kind of go back over it a 
up here next where the I believe that's the uh, horizon indicator that's my favorite instrument by the way I love the horizon indicator it's just kind of a neat little instrument dances around and so you go around and you just kind of clean up where you uh, got a little too much black onto the gray and depending on the level of uh, accuracy or the level of uh, intensity you want your detail to be I mean you can just clean it up to where you know just it looks good and and uh, it looks good and you can do your detailing or you can just leave it however you want uh, in my early model building days when I was highly obsessed with the uh, instrument panels and all the instruments the instrument panel was like my most favorite part to do. I, I put a lot of intensity into it. I did a lot of uh, of crazy detail. And today, and maybe it's just because I'm getting older, I just sometimes wish the thing was already painted. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy doing it, but there's sometimes I just wish it was it was painted. I think today my favorite part of building models is once I've got all pretty much the major assembly done I can just uh, start doing the the body painting and I think I enjoy that most today doing the masking and doing different types of paint jobs so anyway there you just go around with an exacto knife and you're gonna scrape where you have excess on to the gray and coming up here in just a second I'm gonna show you how to touch up the other areas uh, where you have scraped off too much of the gray with your exacto knife. Okay, now we're ready to touch up the gray. I've got the uh, trusty old gold gray model masters from Testers. Got my modified Testers brush here that I used to detail. And I'm just going to go in and just touch some areas up here. And it's just amazing how much the camera picks up that you can't see with your eye because I'm looking at this and there's stuff that I'm looking on my screen here and it's like, man, I've kind of missed some stuff. But anyway, we'll start down here with these little dials. And it's hard for me to see because of the way I have the, the camera position. Usually I'm a lot closer, so probably not going to hit it too well. But again, just for the purpose of trying to show how I do it, got a little bit up here, so a little carried away with the gray. Just go through and do light strokes. Try to get what I uh, when I dip my paint. I'll see if I can show you this here. I'll just try to dip it in there and well, it's all out of focus but just try to dip it in there like so you, know, you get, a, get a little bead on there and then get it off and then I'll just go on the paper and if I have to I'll just dab a little bit on there and then let me refocus this onto the panel so we can see what we're doing And then I'll just get back at it. And see there, now we're playing cat and mouse. What I call cat and mouse, going, when you go through doing your touch up, you'll hit what you don't want to hit, but that's just, the, that's just the nature of the beast doing this. That'll scrape off. Uh, here again, I'm just trying to clean this up a little bit. That'll scrape, scrape off. So anyway, that's basically ready now to start doing the fine detail. And uh, we'll get, go ahead and get ready to do that next. Okay, now it's time to get serious uh, with the detail here. I've got silver, testers silver, and 
this is going to be a majority of the detail and it's a little technique that takes a little bit of practice but what you do you're going to have your instrument panel here and I just go in gonna dip in and you want to make sure you get as much of the paint off as possible and then I'll even come down here and I'll just you almost want the brush dry you don't want anything on it hardly and then I'm just gonna go see there's still a little too much on there you're almost gonna go have the the brush uh, horizontal and you're just gonna start going over just like this and it's gonna start bringing out the details You'll really start to see it in the other part over here. Especially where all the buttons are on the bombardier navigator side. Gonna need a little more paint. That's not really turning out how I wanted it. Try it over here. It's just not going to cooperate with me, but you get the idea. I think I'm just in too much of a hurry there. That's that's real good right there. How that bottom part or that yeah got it you're just basically you're just gonna lightly try to get the silver paint to go across and hopefully start catching the raised lines of the of the detail button of the buttons and stuff There. Now, this is going to need some cleaning up, obviously. But it starts to bring that detail out. Uh, I'm not 100%, actually, I'm not real thrilled with how that turned out, but just for trying to give the general. general rundown of how I do my detailing uh, it'll start to look once I get some color in this like the CRT screen the horizon start painting some buttons and dials red and yellow get some green in there it'll start to it'll start to bring it out more so let me just clean this up here Okay, that's not too bad. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to paint the artificial horizon. I've got some light blue here. And uh, let's see how well I can do. This is kind of an unusual uh, procedure for me because uh, normally I don't have a camera in my face when I'm trying to paint an instrument panel so let's see if I can do it it's not cooperating my hand is shaky get it on camera let's go Just like that.
just like that. Bam! Horizon indicator. Now, I have already pre-shook some gloss beret green for the CRT screen. And we're going to paint that. See, once you start getting some color on that panel, it starts to kind of ease your, you know, your imperfections, your mistakes. Because these are hard to paint. Okay. There we go. There's one. CRT. Now for the uh, Bombardier Navigator. Get some green down in that sucker. And of course it gets on the on the outside of the hood, but uh, that's easy easily fixed. In fact I could just wipe it off right there, see? There you go. Just like that. Now we'll do some uh, red and yellow buttons. Okay, now I'm uh, going to add some red and yellow buttons. And one thing you want to be careful of, and this is very easy to do and I've done it myself, is you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to overfill your panel with red and yellow buttons. Um, it's easy to do. You just want to be kind of conservative with it and just do enough to uh, help it to stand out. Trying to keep from knocking the camera over here. Let me get this positioned and I'll grab a brush and we're going to do some red buttons here. And again, after I, uh, after I dip, I got a bit of a bulb of paint on there. I'll just go and kind of dip it on the paper. And let's find a button here. We'll just say, we'll do the Bob Ross style. Let's just see, there's a button that lives right here. Just a happy little button. Right right there. There. There he is. And uh, I'll give him a friend over here. There. Right there. Oh, there you go. And we'll give him a button. Let's see. Right there. And there. And let's see. Oh, we got a button. One lives right there. And one lives right... Whoops. There. Whoops. Damn it, I hate it when that happens. Well, that's easily fixed. Of course, I don't think Bob Ross would say damn it. Anyway, uh, you get the general idea. I'll come over here. Let me get some more paint on the brush. And we'll put uh, a couple... Well, here's some warning lights, but... Let's see what we can do here. It's hard to do the way I have this position, but those are going to be like warning lights and stuff. And granted, if if this was an instrument panel that I would be putting in an aircraft that I was building, like for example, right now I'm working on the F-105, I would, I would really take my time a lot more and make sure that my detail and painting was a lot more crisp and just for these purposes, I'm for just showing I'm not being a hundred percent. I'm not doing this a hundred percent as good as I would be doing. So I'm just trying to give you an overall idea of how I do it, and hopefully, uh, if you're not experienced with doing instrument panels, it'll help you. And it just takes time and practice. Um, I've been building models since I was a child, uh, I think eight years old. I'm 36 years old now, so uh, it just takes a lot of practice. Get some yellow on there, and I, I don't even think I hit any buttons. I just kind of blopped it. So I'll try to find something to hit. There we go. There, right there. 
And again, I'll go back with an X-Acto knife and fix it up. And we'll just hit something there. And uh, we kind of missed over there. Well, I got some on the CRT screen. This is very difficult to do the way I have this set up. It's un unlike how I usually do it. So anyway, uh, that's about it. It's not the best instrument panel, but, you know, that's basically how I paint them. And then uh, put them in the plane. So this is Josh showing you how to paint an instrument panel. Hope you enjoyed it. Happy model building, everybody. Take care.